Hello and welcome back, everyone. It's been a long time. I uh, still have yet to rescue... Well, I, I, I have a lot of explaining to do. But uh, where we left off last was I got my Spectre Orbiter 2.5 nuke prop stranded on EVE. And uh, now we've basically designed a new craft to... Uh, Go to Eve, fly to Eve, land on Eve, get all the crew members of that failure of a spacecraft and get them back home to Kerbin. We've had to wait an entire year uh, for uh, Eve to go around around Kerbin, but uh, in that year we've designed the Spectre Orbiter 3. This is it. It looks quite similar to the other Spectre, or the Spectre Orbiter 2.5. And uh, I wanted to keep the design relatively the same, but uh, the big, big difference is the back end. Um, gosh, it's been so long since I've streamed or recorded or anything. I can barely remember all the parts that I put on here, but uh, um, basically this engine here is part of the, part of the uh, interstellar mod pack. Uh, pretty much this whole back end is part of the interstellar mod pack. This engine is the DT Vista inertial fusion engine. So anyway, as I was saying, um, basically this is the uh, the rescue craft and will be the subsequent craft for all my missions to other planets pretty much uh, we can carry 14 crew and uh, so it should be I'm only gonna take two I only took two people back to Eve to rescue everyone so there'd be plenty of room and uh, so I took Bill and Jeb out there in this thing um, I already did it already I forgot to record it because I was kind of lazy and tired I don't know didn't really feel like recording it but uh, so I got out there and I got around, I got into orbit around Eve and I didn't do any aero brakes or anything because I was, I, I had so much Delta V. Um, these fusion engines and this, or this fusion, fusion engine and these uh, thermal turbojets just are amazing um, for uh, Delta V and efficiency and this, this fusion, fusion engine uses uh, deuterium d deuterium and uh, mainly uses kind of electricity and whatever I don't know St stuff like that it's awesome and uh, yeah it's really uh, interesting to fly it flies relatively the same as the other uh, Spectre orbiter so I'll just kind of fly it around quick give you a quick demo and then we'll be then we'll switch over to Eve where we have already landed and get the crew back out of there and into orbit I've never done I've never done a uh, ascent out of Eve's atmosphere so that is going to be very interesting indeed um, but we'll give it a shot We have two small helper engines there, just in case of emergencies when we need some we need some extra thrust. Um, it's a very wide aircraft, a very large aircraft. We've got thermal radiators, of course, scattered across everywhere. All right, do the final run up, and here we go. The ascent out of Kerbin is just like the previous Spectres, um, just gaining as much altitude as you can and as much speed as you can and before things start to cut out you switch over to to uh, more rocket mode on the engines lifts off very easily it's got a lot of lift I had to make it have as much lift as possible because this thing weighs essentially 200 tons so we'll bring the flaps up bring on some SAS and kind of Help us out here. It's got kind of two stages of, of uh, air brakes as well. That's the first stage there, and then the second stage is even 
more air brakes. That really helps out uh, for slowing down um, once you've landed. Um, I usually just use the first stage of air brakes um, on a descent or something like that, or if I'm in the upper stages of an atmosphere and I don't want to slow down too hard and have too much de deceleration and because you can that can risk breaking apart your aircraft if you have too many G's uh, of deceleration on, on uh, stressing on your wings um, I've had it uh, where that will rip your wings right off so but yeah this thing is very uh, easy to fly with a joystick anyway um, you, one of the things you gotta kinda look out for is is watching your yaw your, because it's such a big wing surface kind of it does have two fairly large vertical stabilizers there in the back, but as you can see, it, it does get a little bit unstable. It want, likes to yaw around quite a bit, kind of like the uh, uh, the B-2 uh, Spirit, or the, the flying wing, the bomber, if that did not have any computer... Oh, I just lost... Oh, jeez. Just lost... Uh, <laughs> had some aerodynamic failure. I was not paying attention how fast I was going. Yeah, you really got to pay attention with this aircraft um, when you're flying and how fast you're going because there are aerodynamic stresses that this aircraft cannot exceed uh, speed-wise. And uh, so we'll go ahead and bring it back in for kind of a landing here. Bring out the first stage of, of air brakes. And uh, whoops, well, it's okay. We, don't, we didn't need those anyway. We still have canards. Um, I just like having those bigger uh, control surfaces for uh, uh, more refined uh, control inputs, and and s it, it does allow for slower slower speed controllability and uh, higher angle of attack control, which sometimes aircraft of this size will need because on planets with a uh, heavier uh, or more planets with more gravity and maybe less atmosphere you might have to get a higher angle of attack in order to get your speed uh, low enough to get a safe touchdown uh, landing speed um, on Eve I was able to touch down this bad boy at oh, I think it was about 65 meters a second I'd, 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 I'd n I wouldn't have been able to do that on Kerbin well maybe if I was half Oh god, I'm gonna stall it out. Oh no! We're okay! Jesus! It's very hard. <laughs> oh god! Jeez, oh! They're okay. They're okay. There was just two crew on board, and <laughs> they're okay. We're okay! Jesus! It's very hard. Oh my god. Oh, I am so bad. Yeah, a lot of concentration is needed when you're flying an aircraft such as this. It's hard to talk, to talk and fly at the same time. <laughs> Good lord. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and revert that flight and forget that ever happened. Um, and then we'll go off to EVE. I don't even remember what I was trying to say there. Um, landing speed, something, something. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, anyway. Wow. <laughs> that was a few billion Kerbal dollars down the drain there, but it's a good thing we have that revert button. Jesus. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, one thing I also did was I sent the sa that, that same craft I was just flying there, I sent one of them out to Duna and got it, uh, got it to an, in orbit around Duna. It's kind of a 
elliptical, not, not equatorial orbit because I'm lazy. And we can fix it once we get down there because we can fly around. Um, because those uh, thermal turbojets can run off of atmosphere, which is really helpful. Um, so let's see. The e Spectre Orbiter 3 Rescue. So I, oh, one thing I have on this... Uh, we'll go ahead and fly it here. One thing I have on the Spectre uh, 3... Um, is some cathane, two little cathane drillers with some small cathane tanks and cathane converters. Um, so that's one thing I need to do with the uh, one I have around. Oh, geez. It sunk into the ground. Oh, God. Why is one of the drills still out? Anyway, those are where my drills are. I don't know why that one's... Retract drill. Yes, I would like to retract the drill. So uh, let's see. Let's cycle the landing gear and try and one one kind of ghetto thing I had to do in order to actually in order to actually get anyone in and out of the plane since this nose is so high off the ground here is <laughs> I had to uh, lower the gear or raise the gear I'm, I should say and I had to sit down just on the the, the pods there like that. And then I was able to, the, the ladder was able to uh, get far enough down, close, or close enough to the ground that the Kerbals could hop on the ladder. And I had to do that in order to get the drills <laughs> to, to actually touch the ground and uh, do their magic drilly stuff. So now we'll put the gear back down and, oh geez, it's kind of, oh god, it's buggy. Ah. It wasn't like this yesterday. There we go. Hmm. Well, I did have struts on them. Must just be so much weight. I mean, that that, that whole wing surface that's sticking out there is the uh, sort of shock absorber for the whole aircraft. So anyway, I got all the crew on board. And we'll go ahead and uh, quick save. So this is the other aircraft that uh, if you have been watching previous episodes, this aircraft here is the... Spectre Orbiter 2.5 nuke prop. Basically, the regular Spectre Orbiter 2.5 looks the same as this, only without without these uh, propellers here. Um, so as you can see, is they're pretty close um, design-wise. Just the, the three is quite a bit larger, or a little larger. I love the design. I wanted to keep with it, keep stick to the design as close as I could. Um, so yeah, this is totally worthless now. It's completely out of juice. Anyway, I might as well take off. Let's see. Uh, go ahead and activate the engine here. Activate that one. On the, I don't, I, for, I forgot to set up my key bindings to where I could just quickly activate and deactivate the uh, thermal turbojet engines. But on the other aircraft, I do have key bindings. Now on this main engine, I can't activate. I mean, I could now because there's no Kerbals inside this craft here. Um, but uh, if there were Kerbals inside this craft, I would not be able to activate this engine here because of the neutron radiation that it makes. Yeah, it would kill them. So now we're just gonna go ahead and turn towards this hill here and take off. Hopefully I don't I need to slow down here so I don't clip my wing on this. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room. Add in one notch, two notches of flaps. Go ahead and bring the brakes on and run the engines all the way up. And this will be flying around on EVE. We're gonna probably fly around, fly more towards the equator. All right, brakes release. Here we go. I'm gonna concentrate on this takeoff. It's gonna be kind of a Kuznetsov kind of takeoff here uphill. Gaining speed slowly. This thing is very heavy now. Just over 200 tons, and we're airborne. 
That very thick atmosphere providing a lot of lift, and the thermal turbojets doing an excellent job at providing enough thrust to get us airborne. Well, we're nearly, we're pretty much near the equator, so. Wow. Why is that? Oh, that's on orbit. Don't need that. There we go. Bring the flaps up all the way. And we'll turn towards the east. Yes. The crew of the Spectre Orbiter 2.5 nuke prop is finally on their way home. It's been a long year and a half waiting for their rescue. They came and they landed and they were not able to take off again. No matter how hard they tried, they might have been able to get a foot off the ground, but that's it. Then they had a year and a half of just staring into the purple fluff above, wondering when Bill and Jeb would drop down from the purple marshmallow and rescue them. But they came, and I forgot to record it. But now, they're here. And they're on their way home. Unless I fuck it all up. So, it's got a long... We got a lot of flying to do. Get up to uh, a very high altitude. Um, I will eventually activate my uh, fusion engine neutron engine um, actually I, I, I might as well just go ahead and activate it there we are that thing has a lot of thrust thrust 1100 so I'll get us up there pretty good surface to Surface thrust rate ratio is 0 0.77. That's not. That's not. That, that's not very good. So this is definitely a test um, on whether or not I can get back out of the atmosphere. Hopefully, I didn't didn't design another. The the classic Kerbal space program mis mistake is, you know, in the first place having to do a, a rescue mission to somewhere, which I've done now. And the second classic mistake is who's now going to rescue the rescuers. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen, but we'll see. Even if I have to, even if I have to kind of use up some fuel, I mean, this thing can just, this thing can go across the entire solar system on half a tank. So, uh, I mean, I pretty much got here on half a tank. I used up nearly half a tank just getting it into orbit around Kerbin because I was lazy and used uh, oh we do have the the, uh, the, the two regular um, rocket engines on the side there that we could fire up and I used those on my ascent from Kerbin because I was lazy and used up quite a bit of fuel and even came here after that and uh, once I was here I used the cathane driller to uh, top off everything so we did have one catastrophic failure of a part on re-entry of EVE here. Uh, I had a, uh, a docking port, a Clampatron, I think it was right here or so, and that flew off due to aerodynamic stresses. So I'm just going to kind of keep this ascent profile until I, until I get to more to thinner uh, atmosphere, uh, because if we get going too fast, where it's real thick, we'll just have high dynamic pressure and the wings, if I accidentally pull too hard or we get into any kind of oscillation, the wings will just probably snap. We wouldn't want that because then we'd be for sure doing another rescue mission. I'd probably have Leaving the landing zone behind. So long. That Spectre Orbiter 2.5 nuke prop will be a monument on the eve to the testament that we will not leave a current behind. Unless we have to. Let's see, if I remember correctly, the atmosphere doesn't start around 80,000. 
or so, 86,000 maybe. So we got a ways to go. Um, probably going to get up to around 45,000 and we'll start leveling out now. And yeah. We still have a lot of density, air density, so I'll just keep going at this uh, climb angle. Once I see my angle of attack getting much greater, I will know I need to probably pitch down and get it, kind of gain more speed. But we got a lot of density, um, a lot of atmospheric density to go on our climb out. We're getting even more thrust here on our uh, thermo, thermal turbojets, which is interesting. So our surface, surface thrust weight ratio is actually increasing. I'm not sure how much that will continue, but that's nice to see. That is reassuring. We might actually make it off this purple feather pillow planet. Yeah. That's really increasing. Holy crap. Might as well... Uh, Oh man, see those wings really flapping? That's uh, that's one thick atmosphere. Got to be real careful. As soon as I see that flight status window, right now it says nominal up there in the top left. As soon as it says high dynamic pressure, I gotta be uh, I gotta be real careful. Surface thrust to weight ratio 0.95. Good. We have a lot of uh, meters a second to go. This is. Quite the journey. It's all new to me, though. At some point, I might have to switch over to uh, LFO mode on the thermal turbojets. We'll lose some thrust, but hopefully by then we'll be going fast enough. That might not matter. Looks like thrust is starting to plateau a bit on the turbojets. Alright, let's see if SAS can hold us here for just a moment while I check on my thermal turbojets and see if I switch modes to... Let's see, they're on atmospheric now. I... There we go. Okay. That's not good. Oh, that's even not good there. Even with those on, it only takes us up to point seven seven. Oh, crap. You have got to be kidding me. Maybe I'll have to take off out of here with just half fuel. That might be a possibility. Man, we still got a long ways to go. If I remember correctly, it's about 11,000 meters a second delta V to get off of EVE into an orbit from the surface. Well, we didn't start from the surface, so... We might be able to make it. Serves as much as I can. If we're still increasing speed and our velocity vector is still above the horizon, then that is good. See how much pitch I can get away with. Ooh, starting to stall there. Okay, we're on the edge of our maximum left come on apoapsis 48 it's not very high above where we are
This is gonna be close. 54,000 meters. Come on. Come on, Spectre Orbiter 3. Apoapsis 64. This is looking better. Alright, I'm gonna turn off my regular rocket engines there and see if we're able to get any more speed. Alright. Good. Apoapsis 75,000 meters. Good. Oh, shit. Why is that run out of fuel? It's got all of that there. Well, this is odd. That was close. Okay, Apoapsis, 181 kilometers. Whew. Okay, we'll just... Wow, all right, we made it into space. Now we just, well, that's, we got a little ways then to uh, our circularization burn. All right, just 184, roughly, meters a second needed. Excellent, we made it. Pretty, pretty much. Just gonna do some fuel transferring here. I don't know what the heck the deal was. We have this whole fuel tank here and it was not... Ah, I've spotted a design flaw. Well, Bill and Jeb, you've done it. You got out of Eve with less than one of uh, with a thrust to weight ratio of less than one. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it would be possible. Just 177 meters a second left to go and we're in orbit around Eve. I'm sure everyone back at Kerbal Space Center is celebrating. Their rescue mission is halfway a success. Now we just have to plot a course home and it's probably going to be a little bit of waiting time while we're in orbit. I probably could have waited on the surface, but I think uh, I think the nuke prop crew was wanting to get off the surface quite badly. So it looks like it's going to be another half a year or so for them to be able to make it back. Unless we just do this crazy burn, which we don't have enough fuel for probably so that's gonna be that's gonna be this guy for a little bit here and we might as well go back over to the uh, Spectre 3 orbiting Duna and get an ascent and or descend and land on Duna that's gonna be a first time for me so should be interesting so I'm gonna take a quick break here and be back later on